Hello and welcome to Red and April Off Grid. We recently finished drawing in our home and we've been taking a little break to work on the garden. We just finished stuccoing our aircrete wall and now we're moving on to the inside of the garden and we're outfitting the garden with raised boxes, trellises, etc. At the end, April will be giving a tour of the garden and the next week we'll probably be getting back to the home build. After finishing the garden wall, our next item was to go ahead and dig a trench along this side of the shipping container. We do get some runoff from the shipping container. The gutters only catch what comes off of the roof that we added, so there's about half of the shipping container that drains water off. And we didn't want that pooling and collecting inside of the garden wall, and so we wanted to make a nice little kind of ditch for it to drain out of. So we're digging a ditch and we're piling up that dirt in order to kind of block off that side. We want to create drainage so that it'll flow out of the garden and not pool up in here. The trench continues on the outside of the garden. As you can see here, I'm kind of joining the trench in with the drain spout from the roof of the shipping container. And so those will join into one trench and then I'm expanding that trench to kind of go out into the weeds and disperse on that low side of the land there. And also for smaller rains, we could close off this drain. You can see where it goes underneath the gate there. We could easily close that off and kind of keep the water in the garden area if it's a smaller rain. But we get some huge rains here that would totally swamp this garden area. And we want to make sure that it, we have a way for it to escape. We're really trying hard to seal in this garden area to keep like rabbits and small animals out. And so this fence and the gates close it in really nicely. The last part was to close this gap between the ground and the bottom of the shipping container. It's about six or eight inches, kind of depending on where. And so we scratched our head trying to figure out what to do there. And we finally decided to go ahead and, and just use chicken wire and bury part of it with some of the dirt from that drainage ditch there. And so we're, we're taking up some of that dirt. We're getting it muddy and packing it in. And so kind of burying half of that chicken wire and then just running it up alongside of the lower part of the container. And there's a nice place there where we'll be able to clip it on the top side in order to hold that chicken wire in place and seal in that gap. And it actually worked out really good. We were able to get that dirt piled up and kind of bury the lower part of the chicken wire. And that dirt's really packed in hard and dried really nice. That clip worked well, so that actually sealed this in really nicely. Here's the exit of the drainage ditch where it goes off into the bushes. And here's the inside of the drainage ditch. You can see it goes underneath the gate there. And I put a pipe through there and then I put some concrete on that just to keep it from washing out. We're finishing up all the earthwork before we move into building all the accoutrements for the interior of the garden, all the boxes and everything. So part of that earthwork is to backfill along these walls that we made. So we had kind of dug down to the base of the wall so that we could get the stucco on these walls. Uh, remember that these are poured aircrete walls that we built while we were doing our aircrete testing. And we recently come back in and stuccoed them. And so once that was all done, we had to come back in and backfill to get you know the land all nice and smooth again and to get the waters where the water will drain away from the fence. So that's what we're doing here, getting that all nice and backfilled and packed in. Just about finished up with this one side here and about to work my way around the corner doing this backfilling. One thing I might note here is that as we've, we've lived on this land for a year now, we've been through a monsoon season, so we know kind of how the water flows on the property. And so we've taken that into account as we build this wall and as we backfill, we know that there's some earthwork that we're going to need to do to direct the water where we want it to go. Part of that is this backfilling here, just trying to keep the, the water away from the walls, so it'll kind of flow away and around the wall. We do get some runoff in this area during the major rain events. Not a ton, more just a little stream or a little bit through this area, but enough that it would hit the garden wall and build up there if we didn't do something about it. So just making some accommodation for that. And so one of the things I'm doing right here is I'm building a, a ditch to divert some of that water away from the wall before it ever gets to the wall. And so here I'm about 10 or 20 feet away from the wall. You can see the wall there. And I'm digging a ditch all along the front of it to catch that water that'll be coming down and direct it around the garden wall and kind of off into the lower part of the property and off into the, to the grass and weeds there. I think this will work. I'm digging a pretty good sized ditch. It's a little bigger than it looks here. And it ought to capture a lot of water and keep the bulk of it away from the wall just so it doesn't try to undermine the wall. Well, that done, it's finally time to move on to the garden boxes and outfitting the garden. 
April had in mind some shallow garden boxes, nothing too tall, something shorter that would be easy to fill up with just dirt and mulch that we can get off of our property here. And so I started just rounding up uh, extra boards that I had laying around. We didn't want to spend a bunch of money on lumber. Lumber's crazy these days, so we wanted to just use lumber that we had laying around that we'd already used for something else. So this is all reused and repurposed lumber. And so I gathered it all up and we figured out how many we, we could make with what we had. And the first one that I'm making here is kind of using all the big boards. So this will be the biggest that we can make. I'm using kind of the longer pieces that we had. Most of this lumber comes from the forms that we use to pour the footers on the house. Most of these boards are warped and cracked and not really good for anything else. So this was the perfect project form. They'll be great for our needs here. The next thing was to get a flat spot in the garden and figure out where we wanted to put everything. The first one is going to be in this corner here, and so we're removing some of the mulch that we put in last year, getting down to the, to the soil there, just clearing a nice flat spot for it. The soil is actually nice here after being covered in that mulch for a year. It's a darker soil. I'm kind of having to get some grass out. But now we've got it nice and smooth. We're wetting it down and getting it ready to put the box in. We like to put cardboard down first if we have a nice piece. I've heard this called sheet mulch before. And then on top of that, we're putting in our raised garden box here. And then I'm staking that down in a couple corners so it doesn't move while we're filling and backfilling. This particular garden box is roughly nine and a half feet long by five foot wide. And I believe it's about eight inches tall. Back to making more garden boxes here. All of the boards were kind of shorter that we had left over, but after scavenging through my woodpile and finding everything I could, we managed to scavenge up enough boards to make three more garden boxes, all about five by five. Here I am kind of picking through, and April's encouraging me to use the old twisted up stuff, because it doesn't matter, it's just a garden box. So we were able to make three more garden boxes. The next thing I built was an A-frame for the first garden box we put in that big one. So this is actually a really tall, big A-frame. Didn't get a lot of footage of it, and I'll tell you more about it later. The next order of business is to finish up these garden gates. And so I'm taking them off by just removing the pin from the hinges. And then I'm going to take them over to a cart that I have, and I'm going to blacken the wood. I just think it would look a lot nicer with the wood blackened. So I'm going to blacken the wood first. And then I'll put the wire on and then they'll be totally finished. April's doing some work here. She's actually filling the garden boxes with soil and mulch from our property. I'm applying the blackening here and I'm using the same blackening agent that we used on the eaves of the house. So this is some of that that we had left over. I think it makes a real nice look and it just makes it blend in not to have that bright wood showing. Next up was another A-frame. This is kind of a mini A-frame. It's about half the height as the other one that I briefly showed you. And it's about the same length, so about nine and a half, ten feet long. And in case you're wondering, these A-frames are going to be used for climbing vegetables. So the first tall one that we built is going to be used for climbing beans. And this shorter one that I'm doing is going to be used for climbing squash. So we'll be draping wire or stringing wire up on these for these vegetables to climb. So anyway, that's the idea behind these A-frames. This one's a short one, only about four foot tall, and I'm using uh, some reclaimed wood for these as well. So this wood that I'm using are actually leftover purlins from the build of the barn roof. Some of the really warped uh, wood that was really unusable. Some of the stuff that I just couldn't find a place for and didn't need. But they're really good wood. They're like oak and ash. Really good sized strong wood so they're i knew they were good for something but i couldn't imagine what you'd ever be able to use such warped boards for so this was the perfect project for that and it, it was really exciting to find a good way to effectively use this lumber because like i say it's great lumber and it was really fun kind of piecing this all together in such a way that the warps worked together and came together it's kind of like an artistic thing and i really actually enjoyed building these just a really fun neat project they're like super sturdy you could do pull-ups on these and they, they really look at home in the garden and should last for a really long time. To further strengthen these joints, because it is really thick wood and so just putting screws through it doesn't really feel like enough, I wanted to put some bolts in in kind of strategic locations. And these are actually some leftover bolts we had from the roof. Uh, had way more than we could use and couldn't return them. So again, this is pretty much a free to us. Some bolts that we have no use for that we're using for this. So basically we have almost zero additional cost in these materials. It was just really cool to be able to find a use for them and actually uh, bring them back to life. So almost free project for us, 
but it's a really nicely equipped garden that we hope will work really well. I decided to go ahead and fill up this little trench with some large rock uh, just to keep it from filling up with debris and, and mulch and that kind of stuff. That way, even if it does kind of get covered up with debris, the water can still flow out through the rocks and still escape the garden area. So that's what I'm doing here, just bringing in five gallon buckets of some of this big rock that we actually had left over from the septic system. We decided to go ahead and seal these raised beds with something just to protect them from the moisture in the sun. And we had some pinifin left over, and so that's what we're using on that. Pinifin works great. We actually looked it up to make sure it was garden safe or safe to use on wood that you're growing produce in. Anyway, it's, it's perfectly safe and good for this use. The next thing was to attach the chicken wire to the gates and kind of finish up the gates. The space that we needed to cover was four foot tall, and so this four foot chicken wire that we had left over from the main part of the garden fence worked perfectly here. So I'm just putting it on and kind of getting it attached with staples, and then cutting off the remainder, putting in some more staples, and then hammering the staples down to make sure they're fully engaged with the wood. And it seemed to seal up pretty nice. I did show a little bit more of the process of making these gates in the last video, so check that out if you're interested. On this particular raised box, I decided to make this little wood frame, and it's going to serve the same purpose that the A-frames will, and that will bring up a coarse, heavy wire over the top of this, and that'll give something for the vegetable that we have planted in here to climb on. This bed will be for our cucumber, and it's a climbing vine, so they like to have something to climb on. It's good for them to get up off the ground, makes it easier to pick, and the bugs can't get to them quite as well, so should work pretty good. We're filling the beds here, and this bed is filled mostly with good rich topsoil, but we also heard that the silt and sand that, that kind of collects and washes is good, and so we harvested some nice silt soil and some sand out of our pond, and we're putting that, especially in this box, we put a fair amount of it. Like I say, it's still mixed with a lot of rich topsoil, but we're curious to see how this works. So we put quite a bit in this box and then some in some of the other boxes as well. Here we are, we're kind of spreading some of that mulch around that was in the garden previously between the boxes. And then we're filling the boxes with that topsoil and then putting some of that silt and sand in as well. As far as the designs of the garden, we just kind of made as many of these boxes that I could. And then I put them where April wanted them. And then we did these A-frames. So April has in mind exactly what she wants to plant. And, and so she told me where to put things and that's how we, that's how we laid it out. I'm sealing the wood on the big A-frame here. So for this big A-frame, those beans, what we're going to do is put some wire up over the top, several strands, and that'll give those beans something to climb on so they can climb all the way up to the top of this A-frame. And it gets them off the ground, it'll be easy to harvest, and gives them lots of room to grow. April wanted this A-frame as tall as I could get it, and so it ended up being about 8 feet tall along the top beam, and like say about 9.5 feet wide. So here we're putting in the topsoil into these boxes. So April discovered this really awesome source for topsoil, really rich topsoil out here in the desert. So under the mesquite trees, these old mesquite trees, uh, leaves and stuff have been falling and mulching and stuff for years and years. And so right underneath kind of the base of a lot of these mesquite trees, you find this really rich topsoil. And so that's what we're collecting. We're going around to the mesquite trees and collecting this awesome topsoil out from under them putting it in these beds. It seems to be a really excellent growing material. April used it last year and her garden did very well. April is already planting. We haven't even quite finished everything up yet, but she is all over it. She's already planting a bunch of stuff in here. I'm not even sure what all, but she's getting started on that. And pretty soon I'm going to be finishing up and installing the gates. Well, I finally got the gates done. I'm ready to hang them. Uh, the hinges that I used for these actually was a, a box of hinges that we ordered a long time ago, got ridiculously cheap. It used up the last ones on these on these gates, so uh, they, even the hinges we already had. These are finally done. I'm, I'm putting the pins back in and hanging it. I think it looks a lot better painted black. It's done. Very exciting. The garden wall is now complete. April is planting away here, and I, I believe she's planting beans and radishes and maybe some other stuff in here. And now we're actually covering this with chicken wire. We've always thought that it would be good if we could cover and protect the new growth with chicken wire, but we've never had a frame or any way to attach the chicken wire. So these boxes are awesome for that. We can just roll out the chicken wire and attach it to the wood frame. So already really enjoying these uh, boxes.
So I just thought I'd show you a little tour of the garden currently. I planted most of this stuff on April 23rd, so it's been about a week and a half, and I'll show you around. Of the gate here, it turned out really well. The latch works really good. This opens, and this side latches the back. Okay, so I have green beans and radishes and some greens in this bed. So I planted the green beans along the side and I plan to put some twine or something to go up to the top once they start growing. I put this chicken wire over them to see if that would be enough to keep the birds from eating all the plants. And so far it seems to be working. I wasn't sure if it was the lizards or the birds that are more of a problem. So these are doing okay so far. A lot of them are coming up. I've spaced them at about a foot or so. I'll thin them out once they get grown a little bit. But they're doing very well. I don't see any of the greens coming up. We have a few radishes coming up. And then have some along the other side also. And then this will be my squash. So I put some flowers around, tried a few different kinds to see how they do, see if the birds pick them off. And so far these are doing pretty well. So this is going to be butternut and spaghetti squash. Here's a pear tomato plant. So I planted this about a week and a half ago. I have some air crete around it just for kind of a wind block and also to give it a little more heat at night. We did get down to 29 degrees the other night, so but everything out here was fine. I think everything is low enough to the ground that it did okay. So this is a bit of an experiment. This is a gopher repeller, and we don't currently have any gophers in here, so I'm hoping this will be enough to discourage them. But we also have some traps and some other means of control if we have issues. It sounds just like a taboo buzzer. If any of y'all are familiar with the game Taboo, that's pretty much what it sounds like. It's not quite as loud, but has pretty much the same sound. It puts vibrations in the ground that is supposed to repel gophers and snakes and anything that's underground. So we'll see if it works. Worth a try. It was $10 on Amazon. So right here I'm going to do cucumber. So this is a different variety I planted here. And I have some seeds over there that haven't come up yet. And I'm going to put some fencing across the top for the cucumber to climb on. And over here is the okra. I just planted this the other day. I've had the seeds soaking for a while because okra takes two to three weeks before it comes up. And last year I had a lot of trouble keeping it alive. The birds kept picking it off and I'm going to try to put some little cages around them. I just got them in the ground and somewhat protected for now. This is a pomegranate, which I was surprised was still alive because we have had groundhogs tunneling up under it. And the leafcutter bees have been an issue. And we get well below freezing. We got down to 5 degrees last winter, so I was really surprised this is still alive. And this is a zucchini. It's grown quite a bit since I got it. I have air crate around it to kind of insulate it. And over here is interesting. So this is where I had the big tomato plant last year. And I wanted to put squash here this year. So as you can see, the bed is completely bare. But under this thing is just full of tomato plants that have been sprouting up. So I took the cover off so we could see better what was going on in here. And there's my two crookneck squash and a whole bunch of baby tomato plants. So that's kind of my experience out here is that as long as you protect them while they're, they're small seedlings from the birds, and you just got to give them a little time to get a little bit bigger than the birds seem to leave them alone. And as long as the rabbits and bigger animals can't get in here, I think the garden will do very well. I don't have to do any weeding because the birds take care of everything. I'm definitely not going to pull any of the weeds at this point or the grass. It at least gives the birds something. To eat. So here's another covered container that has cantaloupe in it. Cantaloupe just came up a few days ago so here is some volunteer squash that came up. I had the roll of fencing setting here and the plants had been picked on but had somehow survived because the fencing had protected it so pretty much anything that is not covered is going to be eaten. 
over there is my compost bin. I just dump all my kitchen scraps in there for now. Love these trellises that Red built. Still need to put some fencing over some of them and again hang some twine. I had some potatoes sprouting so decided to plant those here and then I have a little pepper plant right here. The shipping container is a great addition to our garden wall. It makes a nice block. Just kind of helps protect everything. We've planted a tree on each side to eventually give a little more shade to the garden area. Uh, last year I didn't really have much shade. I had some cardboard and some things kind of protecting the plants, but everything did just fine. I think the main key is to have good soil and to have plenty of mulch. And that's the best thing you can do to keep your plants from getting overheated. So I know some of you are going to be wondering why we're not catching all this rainwater coming off the roof. So we have a good well on the property and we've decided just to go and use that for now. Rainwater catchment tanks are not cheap and neither is everything that's needed to get the system set up. So for now we're just going to water with our well. We have a good well out here. So we'll see what it does when it rains, but we may consider digging some trenches going across into the garden to kind of help irrigate the garden with some of the water that comes off the roof. This is what we have so far. Gardening is always an adventure and we'll see how it goes. I'm definitely not an expert and we could have major pest issues or who knows what'll come up. Thank you so much for watching. Join us again next time. We'll be working on our house build and I'll try to give y'all an occasional garden update.